This week we're going to continue looking at documents and Google Docs. So the first thing we want to do this week is to create a new document. As you recall, you go ahead and click Create, and that brings up this menu, and then you pick Document. You can also use the shortcut key, which on a Mac is Shift-T. The reason I'm not doing that is because it opens it in a new window, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to click on Document, and that creates a new document and a new tab. I much prefer tabs to new windows. Now whenever it creates a document, it is an untitled document and I like to rename it because that not only lets me keep track of it, but it also lets me save it. I'm going to name this in uh, the least creative way possible and call it example document 04. I want to take a quick moment here to talk about file names. It's better to give your file names uh, kind of something meaningful. So example document 04 is not very good because that doesn't really tell you what's in it. The way I like to name things for my own personal files, I usually give it the date and year, month, day format. So something like this, then what the document is and kind of leave it at that. Sometimes I'll put a version number if I know there are going to be a lot of them. That way as I iterate through it, I can sort of increase the version number and I kind of know where I am. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this name. A little bit later on, I wanna talk about versioning in Google Docs. That's actually really handy. Um, so now we have this document, kind of cumbersome document name, but we know sort of what we're talking about. And as you can tell from the name, I'm going to talk about tables. So first I want to insert a 3x3 three three table. No particular reason for 3x3, three three, it's just a good basic place to start. Now when you first insert a table, you can see that it sort of spans the entire width of the document. And that's a good point to talk about the page setup. So if you click File, and go down third from the bottom, there's an item called Page Setup. Again, that's File, Page Setup. So once you click File and Page Setup, it takes you to this menu. This allows you to change the page color, which I'm not entirely sure why you would want to do that. Maybe if you wanted to have it pop for some reason, maybe you wanted to create a sort of bright goldeny rod kind of document that is sort of hard to look at. Um, maybe you want it to be a nice mellow green color. Again, not really sure why, but you know, if you're say you're creating a flyer or something to post for the web, something like that, and you wanted something that wasn't just stark white, you could do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back to white because that's a little weird. Um, it also allows you to change the margin. Now this is in default in inches, and that's what most word processing uh, sort of um, applications will be in. What this refers to, of course, is the space the top, bottom, left, and right of the page. So say I adjust this, it's in inches, we're gonna make it at 0 0.10. Say I want this to be really big for some reason, and the left and the right I'm gonna make at a quarter inch each. Now when we click OK, we can see that it sort of changed things. You can't really tell what's happened at the bottom, but you can see how the table has shifted to match that uh, change in margin. This is handy if your professor wants a particular margin size, or you know if you're trying to uh, squeeze in a couple extra pages, you can make the margins a little bit bigger. But most of the time, professors are aware of that, and I've been dinked on points for it, so I really don't recommend it. One other thing to know, you can resize tables. If you sort of hover your cursor over one of these, the little dividers, you can click and drag and that'll resize it. This is pretty handy if you wanna make at a, a certain display of data or if you want it to look a particular way. And again, you can remember our shortcut key for undo on a PC, it's Control-Z. On a Mac, it's Command-Z. And that will undo the changes to the table.